What's up, Gore Squad? Famox here from Game On Your Face, and welcome to the first episode of the new ish series. Is it worth it? Give it to me, I'm worth it. First order of business is thanking IKJ for making that sick intro. His channel link is in the description, so definitely go check him out. So the idea of this series is to compare cards to different versions of themselves to see if they are worth the extra coins for the upgrade, or in this case, the downgrade. Things like Bergeron versus Team League Bergeron, or Carlson versus Player of the Game Carlson. Or like in this first episode, Hall versus Junior Flashback Hall. Here's the rules. I will play both players for 7 games on 100 chemistry lines. They will not be assigned any boosts or captaincy cards. The overall grade is based on 5 stats, puck skills, skating, shooting, physical, and defensive. His current average price is 100k, putting him in the same price range as Kessel and Zetterberg. Puck skills. He gets a 7.5. Hull's puck skills were average. He was okay with the Deeks, very similar to Joe Pawlowski, so his hands were pretty quick, but he didn't have very good control. So if he made a move at high speed or in too close, he would lose the puck. He also isn't much of a playmaker. His passes often just miss a target and would rarely go through crowded areas. Skating. He gets an 8. Hall's skating was somewhat disappointing. Don't get me wrong, he's still a fast player, but he seems decreased from his card last year. When his line is in the green and he just stepped on the ice, you can feel great acceleration. But after just a few seconds on the ice, his legs die down and he can barely beat opposing defenders. However, he was very agile, so he could stop, start, and turn without breaking a sweat. Shooting. He gets another 7.5. Again, I felt a little let down by what Hall brought to the shooting department. He just didn't have that Kessel or Tarasenko level whip in his release, nor the accuracy. In fact, his accuracy was the biggest problem. Even when in close, he struggled to get the puck on net. Most of his goals came from gifted one-timers where he had the wide open net or from deeks and breakaways. Physical. He gets a 6. Hall really had no physical presence on the ice. He didn't do well when trying to protect the puck as the lightest bump could set him off balance, and the bigger bump would send him flying. There really wasn't much upside to his physicality. Simply put, make sure he does not get hit. Defensive. He gets 8.5. I think this was actually the best part about Hall's game. He had a brilliant poke check and could play super aggressive on the forecheck without getting any penalties. He also had a knack for intercepting passes and creating opportunities from the interceptions. I didn't expect him to take on a defensive role, but I found him better in my own end than in the other. Total points. In 7 games, he got 3 goals and 2 assists for a total of 5 points. His overall grade comes to 7.5 out of 10, or 75%. Overall, Hall was somewhat of a disappointment. I was a fan of him in 14 and 15, but this year he just didn't cut it for me. He's still a good player, and I could see him as a second line winger, but he just doesn't have that X factor. I think that's due to his speed and shot accuracy. Although I would consider him to be a fast player, he's not what I expected from his 91 skating. He's also very weak, so he doesn't have much going for him. I can definitely say that I wouldn't take Hall over other players in his price range like Kessel or Zetterberg, especially not for 100k. But what if you could get him for half the price? Would that be worth it? His current average price is 50k, putting him in the same price range as Lineskog and Pawlowski. Puck skills. He gets a 7.5. Flashback Hall is identical to his regular version when it comes to his hands. His deeks were fast and was able to beat top pair defenders. But just like his base, he didn't have very good control or passing. His playmaking skills are basic, and he's easily intercepted. Skating. He gets an 8. Again, Hall's flashback mirrors his regular card. I was pretty surprised that his speed matched his 88 version. When fresh, he can take off and create breakaway opportunities. His ability to stop, pivot, and start were also above average. However, he suffers from poor endurance, just like his base card, so he didn't last very long on the ice. Shooting. He gets a 6.5. This is where you will start to see the difference between the two cards. Flashback Hall had pretty bad wrist shot power and terrible accuracy. He truly felt like the 84 that he is. 40% of his shots will go wide, no matter the distance from the net. He will nail home a one-timer if you give him the opportunity, but he can't pick corners on his own. Physical. He gets a 5. 
Flashback Hall's strength is decreased quite a lot. He feels very similar to Johnny Gaudreau. Even the lightest breeze could knock him down, and there's no point trying to throw hits. He's also very fragile and got injured twice in just 7 games. Easily the worst physicality of any players I've reviewed this year. Defensive. He gets a 6.5. Unfortunately, Base Hall's defensive ability does not carry over to his flashback. He was still good enough defensively, but just not standout. His pokes were pretty average and wouldn't always hit, even with the right timing. Same goes with the stick lift. However, he was clean and didn't take any penalties while he was on the squad. Total points. In 7 games, he got 4 goals and 0 assists for a total of 4 points. His overall grade comes to 6.7 out of 10, or 67%. So is the 84 overall haul worth it? I have to give a yes and no answer. If you're looking for the best bang for your buck, I wouldn't get either of these hauls. There are other players in their respective price ranges that I feel can outperform them. However, if you are an Oilers fan and have your heart set on getting a Taylor Hall, I think the flashback version is a viable option for the coin conscious player. Offensively, he comes very close to his base, and even though he dips off when it comes to physical and defensive, those aren't areas that you really look for in a sniper anyways, so it's not like he's taking away much from his strengths. I also believe if you throw a captaincy card on him, he'll come pretty damn close to his base card for half the price. So that concludes this episode of Is It Worth It? It's pretty much just a review against same players. This episode was kind of weird since it was against a junior flashback. The general idea was to go for upgraded versions, but I can continue to do with flashbacks as well if you guys want that. Anyways, just let me know what you're saying in this series and also who you want me to review next in the comments below. I just want to mention really quick that we are only $23 away from hitting the next patron goal of 150. At that milestone, I'll be giving away one to three team of the weeks every single week. That means once you see EA release the new team of the weeks, I will give away some of the best from the team to my patrons only. So if you want a piece of that and also a bunch of other cool perks, then check out my Patreon page. You get way more benefits compared to when you sub to a streamer. Anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you join the Goyf Squad where I provide in-depth reviews so you can make informed decisions. I'm Famox and I'll see you in the next one.